Hello and welcome to the third video of our four-part series for the FIGS, or Fonts, Images, Gravity, and Sounds project. So far, we've successfully learned how to use function preload and imported custom images to have a background image, an image for our platform, and an image for our Mario character. In this video, we're going to learn how to actually use imported sound effects as well as to trigger them at certain times. So for example, when we press A, so we have a jump sound effect for Mario, and that's also going to involve using a custom sound library. So let's start the same as we have before with our images by making a variable for our sound effects in global. I'm going to make a variable called jump sound. I did do a capital S just for the sake of organization. And let's scroll all the way down to preload, and we're going to associate that variable with our jump sound effect. So we're going to type in jump sound, set that equal to load sound, and the name of our sound is on the right hand side in your files menu and it's called Mario dash jump dash sound dot mp3. As before, you need to be very meticulous with your spelling or else it will not work because processing will not be able to find the sound unless it's exactly the same, including capitalization like the capital M. And if you have, when you press play, you should get an error message saying global cannot be defined and load sound is not defined. The reason for that is we actually have to enable the sound library that includes all of the code and the commands for custom sounds just like we had to enable the p5.play library for multiple key presses. Let's go to the sketch menu on our files menu and under libraries you should see p5.sound. If it's not listed there press show all and scroll down to p5.sound and then turn it on by checking the little box or the little switch next to it. You then need to press save to allow it to take effect. I've already placed a comment in the program that you should have made a fork saying that p5.sound must be enabled. Now when we press play, we should not get any errors other than possibly an animation error, but the sound effect does not play when we jump. So the next project or the next part is to actually place the p5.sound to play every time we jump. This takes place in our gravity code. Let's scroll down to our function gravity. And let's find where we're actually jumping. Underneath the if jump equals equals true, you need to find the else statement that triggers your jump power. That's these three lines of code right here. Else velocity equals negative jump power and you should have a comment that says jumping. Jump counter is equal to jump counter plus one so that's keeping track of how much we're jumping and then it closes the else statement saying close else not at max. Right below the else, we're going to drop in our sound effect by saying jump sound dot play parenthesis parenthesis semicolon. This is how to actually trigger a sound effect to play for the length of the sound effect using the sound library. Turn up the volume on your computer, press play, and now when you press A, you should get the retro original Mario jump sound effect for your personal enjoyment. 